on the program. And we, we are going to start with the opening session. Dr. Tamika Bongista and Dr. Kiran Wang from UNS Health will give us speed to illustrate the objective of the project, the background and the expected outputs and outcomes. And next, we will have the, we will go to the first session about the urban development. We will have expert and certificated scholar from both ASEAN region and international to give a presentation on this. And in the urban development session, we will have the live demo QC success from MGA. They are going to um, arrange the hackathon challenges. And after that, we will have a break from 1 p.m. to 4, to, sorry, to 2 p.m for one hour and following with the drought management platform session. And again, we will have the experts for, we will have the expert to give the presentation and we, we can have the discussion and contribution of after each presentation. And the, for the next, uh, tomorrow, next day on 18 December, we will have the Third session is it related to the topic is COVID-19 pandemics. And in this section, we will have the moderator to control the program and give chance to all of you both on-site and online platform to give contribution and have questions. You can uh, reach your any inquiry at the comments or you can talk via the online from Google Meet. And for the opening session, I would like to invite Dr. Tamita from Jista to give the opening speech first. Good morning, uh, our participants from this room and also participants via online platform. Uh, on behalf of Jista and Asa, it's uh, our great honor to co-host this event with the uh, UNS camp. And for this workshop, I can say that it's a quite big workshop because they are composed of two main sessions that focus on sustainable urban development, uh, drought monitoring, and also COVID-19. All of these uh, topics is this very hot issue, not only for Thailand, but also for our ASEAN region. So for but on this workshop for today, workshop we have a lot of sophisticated experts, lecturers and specialists who are highly skilled and knowledge in their field to provide uh, the knowledge. And we hope that you can exchange your idea and also exchange experience together we are uh, participants in this room and also our online participants. The main objective of this workshop are to strengthen institutional capacity in addressing Geospatial Information Application in SDG, Sustainable Development Goal Implementation, and also for increased awareness of space and geoinformatic technology role for the decision making. Most, import most importantly, the objective of this workshop is to provide experience and best practice for other countries to improve their existing tool and platform on data sharing and planning and decision making and also integrating this dimension to the hot issue for the drought, the urban, and COVID-19. Finally, we hope that for this issue can reach the achievement of sustainable development goal uh, in our region. And as you know that for this workshop, uh, UNS CAP has already developed uh, three platforms that focus on the main issue that I already mentioned and we can exchange knowledge and idea experience and maybe you have some uh, recommendation and also have some question or anything that we can improve this platform not only really for Thailand but for our ASEAN region and this would ultimately contribute to the implementation of Asia Pacific Plan of Action on Space Application for Sustainable Development 
And on behalf of Tisda and ASA, we are willing to support capacity building research and also data technology that we can improve this platform for uh, the use and application for our region in the near future. And this is a great opportunity for you to discuss and exchange an idea how to apply for uh, your project, for your organization, and also for your country. Finally, I sincerely hope that the workshop will deliver a good outcome to a te technological implementation through our society for the global disaster and this pandemic to integrate this uh, idea for our national and into the regional plan for decision making in the near future. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Tanika, for your speech. And next, I would like to invite Mr. Holland. Oh, sorry, Mr. Kira Kira Wang to give a speech. Okay. Uh, thank you, Sydney. Uh, dear Dr. Tanita, uh, dear colleagues, so good morning and a warm welcome to all of you to this workshop, uh, especially professors traveling from Sunka, province of Thailand, and others joining us from the different time zone of the, in the world. Uh, 2020 is a very tragic year for all human beings and peoples in this region. So we lost uh, several colleagues uh, in the space community due to the COVID-19 pandemics. So we could not meet each other face to face. We could not hug, peace, and chat. Some projects and hands-on trainings has to be, have to be postponed due to the travel ban and lockdown in many countries. But the uh, space community still has a dream. Uh, the new blood are coming, the new norms are setting, brought by the digital innovation for enhanced coordination and cooperation. In addition, new support, financial support, technical support from the donors in the region are coming to ASCAP. I think my colleague will introduce uh, during different sessions. Uh, although we have to keep this social distance, but our hearts are more closer to each other than ever. Since space applications is very unique, no one can deliver alone. We have to collaborate. Uh, as Dr. Tanita said, uh, this workshop is a wrap up of our collective work in 2020. Even we have to, uh, if even we have some loss, but new progress uh, have been made in our recent member states. The Secretary has several new initiatives. New cooperation patterns, uh, partners are joining us. New technology and innovative applications are coming to support our regional cooperation and capacity development for countries in this region. So I believe during this workshop, many new ideas, methodologies, and tools will be introduced and discussed to provide new directions for our work in 2020 and onward. So I I would like to express my sincere appreciation to GSTA, ARTSA, and Kasasa University for joint organization of this uh, workshop. I hope this workshop will be very successful. Taking this opportunity, I would like to express our sincere thanks to all of you for your year's support for our work in UNESCO in implementation of the Asia-Pacific Plan Action on Space Applications for Sasam Development Tool 18 to 2030 uh, and operationalizing the integrated geospatial information for a sustainable future. So wish you a happy new year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kiran Wang, for the speech. And next, I would like to ask the online participant to open your camera for a while. I would like to ask for the cap capture your screen. Thank you very much.
Thank you everyone. And next is a session one geospatial information application for sustainable urban development. I would like to give a word to Ms. Juliet Barso from UNSCAP to be a moderator. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good morning and welcome again to all of you who are joining us today, virtually and also some luckily in person. Um, I am Julia Braslow, and I work at SCAP in the Space Applications section, and I'm happy to help lead you through this session. Can everyone hear me all right? All right, great. I see some nodding heads. Um, so we have a lot of wonderful information, examples, and practices that will be shared from countries across the Asia and Pacific region. So I'm happy to help lead through this. And I know it's many presentations back to back. And I want to encourage you to put any questions and comments you have in the chat. And I'll try to get to at least one or two after each presentation. And I also request for the speakers to stay within the 15 minute time limit. And I'll let you know um, as soon as you get to uh, 14 minutes very close so you can wrap up. And without further ado, let's get started. Let's jump in to share our lessons and practices and examples. So now I would like to welcome uh, Mr. Kuan Nan from Prince Songkla University, Thailand, to share with us on geospatial applications and platform for urban development. I hand it over to you. One moment, thank you very much for your patience. Uh, I see eight speakers around two hours. 
By the way, I, I try my best for the time. So the topic I'm going to speak is the geospatial applications and platform for urban development uh, from Faculty of Environmental Management. Uh, this is the, the picture to show you where it is. Uh, you, you, you can hear me today? It's in the presenter's side of the screen. Hello? Again, please. Oh, you want to see two screen. Great, it looks good now. Okay, so I continue. So we're talking about the uh, case study of urban green space, or UTS, and the creation area of some car city, municipality Thailand. And... Uh, you don't hear any sounds yet. Yeah. Make sure you are not muted before you start Can you hear me, Juliet?
then we start to have the part of the GS database. We have the shape file of some car responsibility for the community, for the urban planning population, and from the list we can see that we try to combine like, everything, the forest, watershed, hydro, or land use, green area, recreation, hospital, something like this into the, the uh, database. What is next then, uh, this is to show the, the shape file of some car city, municipality. And for the, this one, to see, in the Songkhar municipality, then we can classify into a small community. There are a lot of community in Songkhar that you can see that from different color. So next one, we will link both from community to the green space. And this is the internal population. You will see also the information about population of each community. And this one is the part of the urban planning. So they have zoning absolutely for which area is for what and what for residential area or uh, some other zoning by the Sokhan municipality. And this is the green area. There, there are some, as I told in the, at the beginning, that there will be five categories I'll talk here later. So this is the, the case of the green area. And so now come to the second step to identify the urban green space. Classification of green space in Sokhan municipality. As I told you also at the beginning, that you see the left hand side is the Songkhan Lake Basin, right hand side is the Gulf of Thailand. And, okay, here come the green space of the Songkhan municipality. And for the yellow one is the green space for uh, service. And now come the specific green space and green space along the uh, true fair. And the last one is other green space. So after we got like a five categories and the area and the location, where are they? So now we come to the third step to classify the functional level and of the urban green spaces. The standard ratio of the green space for service in Thailand. The determined by the Office of Natural Resource and Resources and Environmental Policy and Planning. You see that uh, there is a category to show, as in the table, that the area, or let's say square meter per 1,000 person, and the accessible or distance in unit of meter, and the area in square meter. Each type of uh, green uh, area has their own classification. So we consider the neighborhood and community park these two destinations is the point that we expect that uh, people in community to access with this condition. So, community park have been developed by the uh, by combining the natural green space, green space and the green space for service together. Since the natural green spaces such as beaches, high forest, natural forest, uh, located close to the green space for service can be improved into a passive recreation area where people can enjoy uh, the, the urban in scenery, relax, and go jogging. Uh, surely the activity will not affect natural green space. And the second one, second destination is neighborhood park. For communities settled in the coastal area of Sankar Lake, which are far from service area, the community park has been developed by, adapt by adapting the specific green space focusing on the richest uh, places. It also ha has been found that most green areas, excluding uh, the, the government agency and education institution. I can give you the example like uh, in uh, some temple in, in, in Sokha. So uh, sometimes they have like uh, equipment for, for like a gym for people in the morning. And so temple can be also a part that we call a neighborhood park. So now, okay. the community can be separated into six zones. So one, two, three, by the color you see that, uh, with the six, six zones. And so A, B, C, D, and E, and F by the color. And this is the information in terms of the square meter of uh, each zone that I mentioned. So the community park, you will see that quite, uh, how to say, in the middle, 
will be like a residential area and the park mostly on the coastal or on the close to the Songkhan Lake Basin. The neighborhood park or religious places as the red color. So there are a lot of so 12 uh, spots that uh, community can access. So now come to the fourth step, accessibility analysis or network analysis. So this is the analysis for the green space for service area. Analysis on uh, the service area of all 55 communities. So we have to think about how 55 communities access to the green area. So this is the boundary of each uh, community. When we use the condition of five to 10 minutes walk condition to the service area, from the picture you can see that uh, the central of the green space for the service is the red dot. So this one is the list you see, the mangrove forest, natural forest, and also to the last one, to the beach. So now come to the part of the accessibility with the condition 10 minutes or five minutes. For five, five minutes in the yellow color and the, for the pink is the case of the 10 minutes walk. So now, selected community under the specific five to 10 minutes walk condition to the service area. So the centroid of the service area status, you see the red and the green. So now the yellow uh, line show that the distance between the uh, community to access the green area. And then use the centroid service area status from the calendar on the, on the list. The alphabet might be too, a little bit too small. By the way, uh, the selected community under the five to 10 minutes walk condition to the street area will be the picture as you see. So the specific green area space, so now come to the part of the religious uh, places have been classified as neighborhood park for service, not selected community. More or less the same uh, with the previous category. You can see that the red is a neighbor, neighborhood park or religious places. So now selected also five to ten minutes walk uh, condition to the service area. So it will be you see that the in the middle as it will as it is a residential area. So we have to use the care of neighborhood park for people in community to access with the with the condition five to ten minutes and we get the picture same uh, like this. Okay. So now uh, come to the part when we say if the accessibility analysis by vehicle condition, either bicycle, motorbike, or car, uh, 20 to 30 or 40 kilometer, uh, kilometers per hour. So the centroid of the green area again, and the green is the chosen. So community can access to the green, to the centroid that we chosen. Uh, all communities have opportunity to easily access to all service areas within five to ten minutes. So those are the results that how to find the, the green area for people in community and we have we have done the training on workshop uh, with the topic of the thematic training and workshop on the integration of geospatial information for sustainability urban development during the second to the fourth December. Uh, the result is good. This is the list of the target group. On the left hand side, maybe is the part of Ganesha, the GISDA, UNESCAP, and PSU. But on the right hand side, you see the local government organizations, some kind of city municipality, Bantu, city municipality, Sadao, city municipality, and uh, Mongam, Mongam city municipality, and Kohong. Kong or Kong City Municipality. Okay, uh, that's capture of the screen of the people who join us online, also from international participants. Uh, Indonesia, uh, National Institute of Aeronautics and Space, Alapan, Indonesia, and SDG Center, uh, 
di Bandung, Indonesia. Also Chinese University of Hong Kong, CUHK. Uh, this is a picture to show the, the atmosphere during our training. And also during the training, uh, we use the learning center of ASU to be the training room with computer to all uh, participants to let them know how to do by themselves in searching or selecting the green area in, in their municipality. And the last of the the last day of the training on the, the 4th of December, so we have some exchange, we talk about what we have done during the training. And this is the 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 also the picture during our discussion. Also this one on the fourth. Uh, lastly we move and we meet with the mayor of the higher level official and staffs of some company sorry to exchange to propose opinion about the project. We talk about uh, what is the next requirement or, or what they want from municipality. Then we know that now they have some zone for the municipality now and they have to control about the 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 we uh, what do you call that renovate of the building. Because in, in the in the town that they control the style of the architecture. But they still use offline. So they use the map and when they search some area they just use the highlight pen to do to search, let's say offline or by paper. So it is good, it is not bad actually. By the way, it is not it might be not systematic for them in the future or to think about future. And there might be some mistake if the people who join their meeting on that map paper is not conscious about everything in you know, but if they use the platform or use the tool or use the concept that we train them, so it might be better. And we ask, what is your future, uh, what you want? So they talk about uh, disaster is also one of the possibility to work in the future. And there are many requirements actually, if they have the online system, not, not online, I mean, if they have the, the platform system to, to, to make a planning for the city. So it was very really nice to meet uh, with the team of the municipality to know their requirement. Uh, thank you so much for this. Or maybe someone joined, could one also, or Dr. Tarita joined us during meeting the mayor. Maybe you can help if I forget something. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for this presentation and sharing your experiences in Sansa Municipality. And I want to ask if there are any questions. And I encourage you, if you have questions that you think of while the speakers are presenting, to please let, uh, type them into the chat um, for those of you who are joining virtually. I don't see any questions, and I have to ask you to help anyone who's sitting in the room if you see any hands raised. All right, I'm going to take that as a no for the moment. But if you think of them, please type them in the chat. And now we're going to move to learn a bit more about uh, geospatial information applications, continuing with the theme of urban development, but now in Indonesia. So I would like to welcome Mr. Ilhan Alamidin and Mr. Anjoy Dimara Sakati uh, from the SGG Center in Indonesia. And they are going to present on geospatial information applications for sustainable urban development and providing case studies from Bandung and Makassar. So I hand the floor over to you and share your screen as well. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay, could you see our slide? In yes, it's coming. It's full. It's full mode. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone, and thank you for the opportunity for us uh, to sharing our uh, progress to 
implement the integration of geospatial data information, also sharing data into to site uh, city Bandung and Makassar. And here I'm Anjali Manasakti, uh, representing the Bandung Smart City PIC project, and also uh, Mr. Ilham. Uh, his uh, representative PAC of uh, Makassar Smart City will will share yeah, our progress. So, as a background, I I will mention about the, the project that uh, UNSCAP implement currently about the improving the use and sharing of geospatial uh, information for resilient and sustainable development in some uh, pilot countries. In Indonesia case, we are uh, Bandung and Makassar. Bandung are located in Chapa Island, uh, located in the highest uh, populated province, West Java, and also uh, Makassar, that located in Sulawesi Island. So we, we are trying to explore how the geospatial data can help the local government to improve the, the policy uh, and, and, and create the increasing uh, target of uh, SDGs. And this is the stakeholders in our project, UNSCAP, of course, for the meet uh, the owner of the project and collaborate with the LAPAN. LAPAN is National Institute of Ironic and space uh, of Indonesia that provide uh, remote sensing data processing and also we collaborate with the two university, uh, Institute Technology Bandung and Universitas Hasanbin that has a uh, main task yeah, to integrating a geospatial data and problem identification. To identify a problem identification, the university should be uh, make a communication with the local government, which is a Bandung city and Makassar city. And we are uh, discuss about the existing statistical data that uh, city government has, also how to improve the data and, and implement the data to increase the quality of policy. So at first, I would like to introduce, yeah, maybe you, you are know about the geospatial information sciences that has the capability to integrating data set based on the spatial location, they can uh, possibly uh, uh, change to, to, to improve yeah, the, the, the quality of data. And this is the sample of, of statistical data. Statistical data is mostly uh, approach that use uh, in the national province to local level to monitoring SDGs. And they have advantage and disadvantage, but maybe we can discuss about disadvantage, like how the detail is not uh, explored. So uh, if we, we uh, just compare with the budget and a target should be in, improved, the data, the statistical data. The one is about Earth observation satellite data. You are know that has a uh, satellite has potential to collect the information from surface the earth and provide the continuous and independent data. Some data like collected like uh, data, uh, thermal anomaly, NDVI, and so we can see like some achievement like Hansen developed uh, forest change or Gong developed uh, urban, urban uh, global curvature surface. And for the, the third point is simulation data product, like the other five, the uh, precipitation and uh, wind direction and, and so on. And this is the issue, like how we can improve the SDG data value through integration and computation of data. As example one, we are discussed about a population based on the statistic, but combined and integrating with the various data, like a popular uh, neckline elevation pocket. So we can uh, develop a pixel-based uh, population density. They are increasing the value of the data. So oh, oh, the next is how we can change the geospatial statistic into pixel base and pixel, next uh, level of pixel base we has uh, multi-temporal and high resolution. The second one is about the GDP developed by Kumu and how how they improve from the statistical GDP country and national level into a pixel base. 
So how this we can implement in an in, in urban level? So uh, yeah, I, I mentioned it here in Indonesia case like the, the urgency how to to develop next generation of SDGs dashboard from statistical base that I uh, mentioned in the in the previous slide into uh, the, the next generation that combine not only statistic but also remote sensing and model simulation and. Uh, yeah, I, I'm here to uh, show our progress in Bandung and Makassar for smart city development. There are five pillars. Uh, the first is smart government, smart environment, smart IT communication, smart mobility, and smart health. In here, maybe we focus on smart environment and smart health. In case of Bandung City, we have a six issue, strategic issue. The first is about social demographic, as I mentioned before. Demographic is like main data that have uh, uh, impact into a several issue like COVID, water access, energy, economic, and how hazard can uh, impact to the uh, demography. So this is a six issue that we are now uh, focusing. So the first is your demography. As you can see, the demographic statistical data is the original data that uh, Bandung City Government has and provide to us. Like how we can improve this data into more available data. We combine with urban sprawl and human activity index that we are developed based on remote sensing product. And we create the three products. The first is pixel-based focus density in high rent. Number of people capacity per building. That from this data, we can analyze which house, hotel, uh, government building or others and we, we can analyze uh, uh, the next about how this uh, can calculate can, can impact into water access energy or resilience from moving in hazard and also building your trolls yeah we, we can identify which uh, building are pretty exist in the specific year which building that had developed uh, in a specific uh, year and for biohazard this is uh, original data that I provide from uh, city government how we improve the quality with the dynamic spatial dynamic of hazard ideally we also combine epidemiological projection of COVID gym and we access also the the, uh, the need of uh, health facility in Bandung and we are on long term analysis we, we can predict the, the, the movement uh, and, and identify uh, which uh, area that has potential hidden carry of COVID. So we also provide in the web base to do our engine, and we can see like how connect, uh, connecting with uh, this uh, health issue into a several SDGs issue, like economic, uh, especially, uh, and, and also uh, uh, increasing the quality or uh, air quality or water quality. For water access that we can see in the left side is water access statistical data. This is the original data that provide for Bandung governments. They only have this uh, sub district level. So how this we can combine with uh, data from Lapan and we predict uh, in high risk in household uh, how we interpret this statistical data into a more advanced data. So we, we, we can analyze uh, into household level about the access. As we can see, Bandung City has maybe only 60% uh, area that has access of uh, fresh water. The, the, the other uh, people's uh, community, they're using groundwater. And we can see that the land subsidy happened in Bandung City. And we can also analyze the de demand of uh, urban water. And we can compare and to see like uh, deficit on, or, or uh, surplus of uh, water access. So, and then uh, about renewable energy, we uh, try to develop long term analysis from 2006 to 2020 about urban uh, energy demand and also compare with the alternative uh, renewable energy, which is uh, one of the most uh, effective solar PV. We, we try to combine it and analyze the deficit and support, uh, surplus. Yeah. And for economic, we are modeling. Uh, the level of uh, economic value in Bandung City, we compare it in the uh, household polygon level and we combine it with the asset of economic
economic like market, mini market mall with the total is 13,000 coin and we can evaluate uh, which uh, uh, asset has the uh, highest uh, value, uh, economic value. So from we have this uh, basic data, if we can continue monitoring, we can see like how the distribution of separate or expanding the economic value should be in in the in the uh, in the balance specific in one location because we can see that uh, it can make uh, the, the, the specific location for human activity so this can use for uh, when government to planning a new site for increasing the economic and redistribute the economic value. For multi-hazard, we combine a landslide, earthquake, and flood disaster to create a multi-hazard. And here, the 13,000 uh, asset, we will we can we can uh, analyze the level of hazard, which uh, asset should be give a priority to like uh, some analysis, some apa ya, policy to to make the, the asset be more resilient to, to a disaster. And for Makassar City, focus to develop a sharing data platform or GIS. And they, the, the Makassar team uh, tried to identify the six problem issue in Makassar City and create the, the, the platform that's on the SBR just online. And from here, uh, not only government, but also society, uh, uh, Makassar uh, people can access and can download easily, can share the data and create the government and society interaction and we can see the impact in, in, in after after this uh, release and launching in, 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 in the maybe uh, uh, next month or something. So uh, the Makassar team also have uh, the communication with the stakeholders and for problem and next target, we identify problem about the statistical data, not detail and not sustain. Some data we we uh, uh, got in the three years uh, data long term, but some data like water access only in one year because uh, it's based on the, the government project. The, my my concern is in the government uh, the, the the mayor city change. We, we don't know that the statistical data will continue or not, so it's still my concern. And also, remote sensing data product has error variation needed to validate it, like last one subsidence, like surface and crater, etc. And pandemic condition make our communication has a problem because, yeah, a COVID did uh, impact not only for uh, middle class but also the, 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 the government staff, like uh, some of the the chief of some department uh, affected by SARS-CoV that make uh, priority of government uh, maybe change uh, into how to solve this COVID pandemic. So our next target is validating and also the developing integrated uh, platform, uh, increasing communication again with the local governments to receive a suggestion and expanding our data, not only sustainability, but also like uh, smart government, maybe it can be very interesting. And also uh, try uh, to to uh, evaluate how we monitoring SDGs target together with the local government with our uh, new product, more detail in pixel based in household analysis how we can change how we monitoring the SDGs. So this is uh, our presentation. This is our contribution from uh, UNESCAP, LAPA, SD Center, and uh, SDG Center with us. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Anjar. I only need to have one or two minutes just to uh, strengthen the, my partner from Bandung, uh, moderator. Yeah. Uh, just, uh, just one or two minutes. So we have trying um, in assisting the local government of how this data can be shared to public. So not only is being analyzed, but this data can be available. That's why uh, this project allow us to be able to put it in the web GIS. So it's a platform that can be shared to public. So then people can take decision based on that. 
So right in Makassar, we're really trying to uh, put it in the, the share file of, uh, because we have to have a common platform. So we gather all these uh, government institutions to sit together and see uh, this data that can be worked together. So it's a data sharing for them. Uh, and this is uh, essential and significant for them, both Bandung and, and Makassar. Uh, so we are not only uh, analyzing those data of SDGs, but how uh, public really can occupy and use it uh, for their own purposes, especially for those uh, government institutions, uh, functionals, like the public works, the uh, social workers, etc. So that's, uh, I just would like to add what Anja has uh, presented both of our uh, project. Uh, thank you, uh, Julian. Uh, I return back to you. Thank you very much. Yes, I think it's important that we not only see the part of the data developing these tools, platforms, and approaches, but also the processes behind and the next users. So thank you for I love that. And thank you both for this presentation and all your work. It's nice to see really coming down to the local level in these applications. Um, and I think the next presenter will then take this concept of the SDGs and um, give us a case study from China. So taking some of this information and looking at how it's been applied in other places as well. Um, are there any questions before we move on to the next presenter? I don't see any in the chat, but please feel free to unmute yourself um, or raise your hand. Yeah. Okay, I see someone with the mic. I, I have one question uh, from Peace of Some Kind. Yeah, you're muted. Yeah, yeah. Hand. Did you hear me? Yeah. I, I, I would like to know uh, how, how you deal with the SDG number 17, the last one that talked about the partnership. So how you report it or how you show it the SDG platform that you mentioned. Sorry, the, the question again. is not that clear. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. SDG, normally you have 17 goals. You give example of uh, number eight, number nine, or number three, or health. Uh, but the last one is the partnership SDG 17. So how do you deal with the SDG goal number seven? Uh, uh, sorry, number 17, the last one. All right. And then you want to answer this? SDG 17? I cannot hear the question. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, the question is how uh, we tackle the 17, SDG 17 that, uh, uh, you know, collaboration with other institutions. And uh, for us, I mean, both probably, I, I know that in Bandung as well and in Makassar, we are trying to uh, get connected with the uh, uh, data. So, Lapan, for example, yeah, for example, is supporting us with the satellite data. Uh, we in the city, we cannot uh, provide this, and this collaboration is such a great uh, uh, provision uh, for us to analyze the data uh, like that. Our team cannot provide the data, so the government institution of uh, yeah, uh, all space can provide this, and this is how we collaborate it, and, and also for other uh, agencies as well. So this is a very great collaboration. And then, would you like to add? Um, for me, uh, yeah, because we start this project in on the urban area, so the SDG 11 is our main issue, like how to make uh, cities become more resilient and sustainable. So from that issue, so we we discuss with the uh, Bandung government which issue that has priority in your. Uh, during your uh, government periods. And she mentioned about economic, water, and energy. So from that, we break down and focus on the SDG 6 uh, water access. Uh, from that, we can also get the, what's your current data that you have, you has, and we got it, and we improve the data of access water. Uh, water access, yeah, sorry. And, and about energy, there is no data from the government, so we develop by ourselves. By ourselves. And also for economic, uh, they only provide this uh, location of uh, asset. So we improve how to analyze the resilience of the plan. So basically, we, we, we start from uh, SDG 11, and we break down into how to connect SDG water into urban, and also help into urban and, and so on. 
maybe I hope it's uh, answer uh, your question. Thank you. Yes, back to you, Juliet. Great, thank you, and thank you for the question, and thank you to the presenters as well for sticking with the time. Um, are there aren't are there any other questions? I don't see any in the chat. Is there? All right, wonderful. Thank you for the very clear and interesting presentation. Thank you very much. Yep. Now I would like to uh, welcome the next presenter, uh, Dr. Shu Peng um, from the Regional Committee of the United Nations Global Geospatial Information Management of Asia and the Pacific. And um, he will present to us about monitoring and implementing local SDGs. So a nice uh, extension, a nice next topic after this last presentation. And give us a case study from Peng. So the floor is yours, Dr. Peng. You may begin, to share your presentation. or would you like to, us to try to share it from the other side? Are you able to hear us? Dr. Shu Peng, are you there? Thank you everyone for your patience. This is just our new normal now working in this virtual mode. Mr. 
Beatrice Jeffolio, the main is in the sea. Are you with us? I don't think we have you on at the moment.
So perhaps uh, this, uh, uh, this measurement is not indicative of the whole province. So sometimes we take uh, ground control stations and we consider that as the, as the pollution level of the whole province. But, neither, but that is not true because it's a very localized uh, uh, measurement. So that was our initial thought. So uh, what can we do actually to get uh, uh, pollution measurements in areas where there are no ground stations? And as you can see, ground stations are primarily positioned in uh, populated areas. Uh, uh, for instance, on the left, you can see Bangkok. It has several stations all around the city. And if we uh, take other global data sets, or for instance on the right hand side, you can see the other now system, which is a network of PM2.5 sensors positioned at uh, US embassies around the globe. Right? So, what happens uh, in areas where we don't have so many, uh, so many uh, uh, ground stations? And as you can see on the top uh, image here, uh, there are many in Asia and Europe and in China, but in the rest of the globe, there's very little information about the control, uh, the pollution. Uh, the pollution. So on the bottom side, you can see that actually we can estimate 2.5 based on satellite data. There have been several studies, and actually we have the lab who have several satellites which can retrieve uh, pollution. Uh, through remote sensing. So you can see here on the lower background, we're concentrating on the left. We have a modest two color image which doesn't show so much about the pollution, but in the middle image, you can see there are two LEDs or the LOT, but that or the LOT, which is related to PM2.5, the general pollution. And this is around Bangkok, and you can see, for instance, in February 2020, where we had an intense uh, uh, pollution the earlier on this year. How high is that pollution? And uh, yeah, on the right hand side, you can see on the same day how the city, the air during uh, this event, looked like from a, from an ordinary ordinary picture. So the achievements we made so far from the tour, uh, we have uh, conducted a couple of training events uh, since the middle of 2019. Uh, we met the Thailand's Prime Minister Delivery Unit where they showcased their interest to use their both the data set. Uh, we also have uh, several news articles and uh, primarily uh, we launched a uh, we launched the tool during the press release with the Thai Pollution Control Department recently, just uh, last month in November. So that's the end of the brief introduction. Now I'd like to showcase the tool. Uh, so you can access this tool through this web client, through this website here. So if you go to this website, uh, the first thing you'd like to do is change the language from Thai to English. Yeah. And now we get the English uh, website, and this is actually the, the system we have developed. So you can see all the flags here, the indicators, the keys, are the measurements of PM2.5 as recorded by the Pollution Control Department in Thailand. While in the background image, uh, so the pixels, let's say the color pixels, are the information from uh, satellite data and actually from the GEOS uh, satellite. That's where we retrieve the information from. But right now, the area covered is the lower Mekong, but it is in our immediate plans to cover Malaysia, Singapore, and Indonesia. So, this is actually a call for collaboration as we are actively seeking partners that we can share knowledge and grassroots data in these new countries and perhaps develop further to expand it spatially. So here, for instance, you can see if I click on a single uh, location with a pin, uh, there's a chart coming up. And uh, so, the blood, so this uh, will show the pin to uh, uh, forecast. But maybe that's not a good example. Another one. Right, so here you have the 
the two curves. So the black one shows the 2.5 measurement as recorded by the pollution control department up to today. And the, and the green line will show the forecast. And actually, this is the power of this tool that we have integrated the algorithms which can forecast uh, up to two, three, up to three days in advance, in three hours intervals, what will happen in the air quality in the near future. So you can see here the black line, the actual data from the record from ground stations, and the green one are the data that we forecasted uh, from uh, as estimated from the from the satellite data. And also uh, this tool, you can click on any other part where there is, of course, no ground station. And you can draw a market, you can take this speed, and you can drop it where you'd like to return the information. And of course, because there's no ground truth station there, this will show the actual data recorded by the satellite and the forecast for the next uh, few days. So, also in this tool, there is a download button where you can click it and download the data. Uh, in net city format for everyone interested. And, uh, and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's all I'd like to share with you. So, overall, this is a tool for monitoring the air quality and uh, primarily forecasting for the next uh, three days based on satellite data from the GEO satellite that we currently developed and we will continue to develop in the next few months or years. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation and the demo to really see the hands-on. You can go access the tool. Um, I'd like to hear any questions. I don't see any in the chat, but those who are joining virtually, feel free to, to also unmute and ask. And also those of you in, in person, I don't see any questions. Uh, thank you very much. I can link you to the chat. Yeah, I'll show you in the case I'm almost to use it. Yeah. Yes, you can go check it and then. Oh, we have a question here. Yeah, uh, so they ask if this button can be extended to other countries. As I said, we have now covered the lower Mekong uh, uh, region, and, uh, but we are working into uh, uh, extended to, to Malaysia, Singapore, and Indonesia. But in order to do that, we would uh, require access to some ground truth data similar to what the Pollution Control Department uh, provides in Thailand, not only for visualization purposes, but for also to train the algorithm for the forecasting uh, part of this, uh, of this tool. Right? So we're actually, actually looking for people, for organizations in Malaysia, Singapore, and Indonesia that can help us go through this step and actually. Uh, Actually, they materialize this. Uh, and there's another question what kind of model or software did it use for PM2.4 casting? Yeah, so this is a quite large project, a real project which involves several partners and institutions. To develop the forecasting model, uh, we are we are collaborating with an uh, applied science team, as we call it. So these are NASA-funded uh, US-based institutions who are in charge of developing the the, the science that we uh, employ in our tools. So right now we have a team uh, based in the US, as Dr. Guapa, and he's in charge of developing the forecasting, uh, forecasting tool. So actually he's taking the, very briefly, and very generally simplified, so to say, he's taking the information from the uh, PCD, uh, uh, um, from the PCD ground control data, and uh, he's using uh, machine learning to try and see in this specific region, lower Mekong, how he can forecast for the next three days. This is part of the project. Thank you for those questions and those answers. Ah, we have another one here. Yeah, uh, let's see that. What kind of satellite image did you use for detecting people? So we're using GEOS uh, satellite images, uh, platform GEOS, and uh, we lately started looking into Sentinel 5P for increasing the spatial resolution of the, of the platform. Okay, and 
I have another question about how do we forecast the PM 2.5? I think you alluded to that already with the team at NASA helping us. <laughs> yeah, these are some machine learning algorithms that they are using. I haven't dived deep into what they do so far, to be honest. So uh, I cannot exactly answer to your question. They use some machine learning which ingests the ground truth, the ground truth data from the PCD measurements. Okay, great. This is great. Keep sending questions if you have them. Uh, aha, here comes another one. Yeah, how did you probably calibrate satellite with the ground stations? Yeah, that's a too technical question. <laughs> I cannot really answer right now. We would like to we would have to involve the, the team from the, from the US which develops this uh, methodology. Of course, this is a very technical question, I think. I just want to demonstrate the tool during this presentation, but to I'm not prepared to answer this uh, technical context of the questions. Great. This doesn't mean to discourage anyone from asking questions. Yeah, sure, I think sure. we can also try to, to share information after this workshop is over and ask questions. Thank you again very much. <laughs> and you're on the spot for some of the technical questions. Um, sure. Are there any other? Uh, Juliet uh, Rishi here, just uh, coming in uh, right, in place well. of uh, Dimitris. Yeah, thank you very much for all your valuable questions. Uh, I think most of the questions that you have asked is uh, very, uh, I would say, valid in the sense uh, that these are some of the questions that we normally raise when we, uh, you know, operationalize a particular tool. But of course, the uh, questions that you are asking is uh, mo mostly based on the model derivatives because forecast when we do focus is based on some of those specific models. Uh, we would uh, request you from the survey of the talks and to send us all the necessary questions that you have uh, with, with regards to the different models that are being used and uh, you know the uh, the, uh, the three day forecast that I, we are providing the parameters. I think we lost the sound on your end. Or are you finished speaking? Sorry, if they oh. cut out for me. Okay, so uh, so what we uh, would suggest is if you can send us these questions, we have a dedicated team who is actually working on the air quality monitoring because they are the ones who are uh, uh, building this uh, uh, particular explorer and they are also upgrading this particular explorer from time to time uh, with more updated uh, uh, NASA data products and other uh, satellite data products like the Sentinel products that are currently getting available. So we will be definitely uh, be able to provide you with all the necessary uh, 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 you know, answers that you have for us. So please uh, put your questions to us and do send us, and we will be happy to respond uh, uh, to our technical teams. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Rikuta. Don't stop asking technical questions, and we'll also have to do a technical message at the end to make sure that we can get some of these um, answers to you and I'll be great for the discussion. All right, thank you very much for that presentation. <laughs> Getting us to the, the topic of air quality and air pollution. And now, um, okay, now we will move back to the presentation we were hoping to have happen before. We had some technical difficulties. Um, so I would like to invite uh, Dr. Shu Peng to present to us um, the S local SDG monitoring and implementation case from China. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Yes, we hear you well. Good morning. Well, that was my people make it. Yes, you can attend. Yeah. Uh, so I have, I need to share my screen, right? Yes, please. Go ahead and share your presentation. Let me try if it works. Yes, we see it. So, is this a screen functioning? Yes, it works. So go ahead, please. Okay. Uh, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today, I will uh, bring a case study with China about local SDG comprehensive monitoring and implementation. I'm from uh, National Geographic Centers. China, which is uh, an uh, agency of Ministry of Natural Resources. 
and I'm also the, uh, working for the UNTMA T Work Group Group 3. So today I will have five parts to share. First is the uh, background. So I think everybody knows that UN promote this uh, 2030 agenda. And uh, UN calls upon uh, indicator-based monitoring, which means that with a uh, globally agreed indicator framework and uh, use of the integrating uh, geostatistic data. And uh, this is a, a growth for national and local governments, and also for, and, uh, you know, <clears throat> the Chinese government also. They're very important uh, uh, attention on this. So when we do this uh, case studies, we face a lot of challenges. First is how to appropriate indicators to select to, uh, to fit the uh, sub-national uh, uh, situation. And second is how to integrate the geospatial and the statistical data uh, for this monitoring and uh, service. The third one is how to perform this more progressive assessment. And the last challenge, I think, is how to transfer the SDG monitoring result to knowledge and to support the action. So here is the pilot uh, uh, case uh, areas, which is a county, uh, the Dejin County in Zhejiang province. Uh, it has, uh, you know, uh, 430,000 permanent inhabitants, and its GDP in 2017 is 6.91 billion US dollars, and the it, it is very uh, developed uh, areas. So uh, it has the advantage in the uh, uh, social and uh, economic development, and also it has a good condition of these uh, geospatial and statistical information resources. Uh, so this uh, case study uh, started launched in 2018. So uh, since then, we each year we have some outputs. Uh, firstly, in 2018, we just uh, monitored the progress towards SDGs with just special uh, and statistic data in these areas. And in 2019, we developed uh, SDG knowledge service portal. And uh, this year, we finished this county plan uh, for implementation of SDGs using the support of this uh, SDG knowledge uh, portal. Uh, so here is uh, how we done this, uh, uh, from the local SDG profiles to the SDG service uh, knowledge and actions. Uh, then I will uh, explain each part of, of this uh, work. First is the regional SDGs profiles. Uh, we use a data-driven and evidence-based approach. Uh, firstly, we, uh, we uh, combine UN uh, global SDG indicator framework with regional SDG practice and to uh, localize the indicators. And uh, then we uh, do this special temporal data processes and uh, building indicators with geographical angle. Then we do this uh, indicator and evidence-based analysis and form this uh, pro 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 progress report. And for the uh, localization of uh, the indicators, a set of 102 indicators was selected for Beijing counties. For this uh, localization, uh, work, uh, uh, adaptability, comprehensiveness, and memorability was considered as the criteria for, for uh, localize these uh, indicators. And for these 102 indicators, all of the definitions and calculation methods and data requirements uh, are, are integrated uh, to form this uh, this uh, local SDG uh, indicator sets. And uh, all these 16 SDGs are covered. That is essential for a comprehensive uh, measurement. And then this uh, special temporal data processing part, we collected 45 which are special data sets, 385 statistic data sets, and uh, 66 mapping data sets, and 22 other data were collected and processes. Uh, one thing I uh, have to mention is that uh, we do this uh, disaggregation of population, and uh, this uh, population density was distributed at 30 meter special resolution using land power and use data to fertilize integrated analysis for this uh, statistical and geographic data. 
So based on these models, we uh, disaggregate the uh, population to the 30 by uh, 30 meter uh, grid. And this is the final result. And uh, then we do this uh, data-driven indicator measurement. And uh, uh, there are three ways, three different ways to measure the 102 indicators. First is direct calculation with statistical data. In these 102 indicators, 85 is in this, in this way. Uh, including using ratio, rate of change, index of other calculations. And uh, for the uh, another uh, way is direct uh, derivation from the geospatial data, uh, like spatial density calculation, coverage classification, and others. Uh, ten indicators are in this category. And uh, we also have seven integrated utilization of uh, statistical and geospatial information. This is based on the quantitative measurement of spatial accessibility, coverage, and the spatial relations. And here is the set of indicators measured with uh, geospatial data. For example, the 1.4.1, the population proportion living households with access to basic services. And the 3.8.1, coverage of essential health services. Uh, and the 15.2.1, the proportion of land that is degraded over total land areas. And uh, we designed a hierarchical assessment uh, process, uh, which means we have three uh, levels. First is the indicator uh, levels. We have uh, 79 indicators uh, contracted and ranked because they have some uh, references like the SDG dash, uh, index and dashboard, national plan, and mandate requirements. And we also, have, uh, we also do this single SDG level uh, assessment um, through the group to focus on analysis with uh, qualified indicators and evidences. Then we do uh, three clusters uh, assessment, including economy, society, and environment. And also the coherency analysis of these uh, three uh, cluster were calculated. Uh, this is an uh, example about how we did this uh, indicator and single SDG assessment. Uh, we integrate uh, the, uh, uh, we work in targets into subgroups of focused analysis. Uh, like in, in SDG 6, we integrated 6.16.2 uh, target into the clean water uh, uh, perspective. And we integrated the 6.6, 6.4, and 6.5 and maybe as the volume and quality uh, and uh, efficiency of water resources. Then uh, the 6.6 .6 is uh, refers to the sustainability of water-related ecosystems. And uh, for the each indicator, we have a reference. When we have a reference, we ranked it to three uh, levels, uh, which is ranking them as the uh, uh, as they uh, reach the standard, uh, have distance to and, and the uh, standard and need to improve. And uh, for the cluster then, that we have, uh, uh, we, uh, the, the cluster was integrated in the uh, target level. So the economic growth, uh, concerning about growth condition, uh, growth trend and growth development. And for the uh, natural beauty, it concerning about uh, resource utilization, environment protection, and response to global changes. So, some harmony uh, concerning about uh, survival needs, security needs, and development needs. And for the uh, co uh, coherency efficiency, uh, the, it has a better uh, coordination for these three clusters. And uh, based on these results, we found this. Um, uh, uh, two versions of this uh, progress report, and for, uh, if you're interested, you can download it from this, this links. Uh, it's it's uh, for the uh, PDF uh, files. And then, based on this mm. report, we turn it into another way, of which we call it the SDG knowledge service. And and for the for this as uh, service modeling based on the character SDG, the constructive model has been built. And uh, then we extract knowledge from the report with the progress of knowledge connection to form the knowledge graph. And uh, all the knowledge nodes are 
uh, are visualized. And for the constructive modeling, uh, uh, based on these three level uh, SDG indicator frameworks, we expanded into uh, five uh, level uh, modeling, uh, which include uh, the, do the domain, means the cluster, economy, society, and uh, environment, and the goal level and the connotation level, which means the multiple uh, parties with local characteristics. And the, and the first level is the knowledge point, and then um, uh, 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 fundamental part, uh, the, the fundamental level is the data facts level, level. And according to the domain goals, we integrate the assessment with facts and proofs to form the knowledge point. And uh, from this report, uh, we uh, extracted about 130 knowledge points uh, and covered all the domains and uh, goals. And for the uh, knowledge part, we we have two basic expressions. First is the description. Descriptions introduces the assessment, practice, and actions for the for 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 this knowledge point. And uh, the uh, diagnostic information uh, indicate indicates the uh, a in, in indicator judgments, a variation, and spatial temporal effects. And uh, the Next part is the uh, knowledge visualization. We use special connections to process uh, this uh, uh, special information, like uh, the special, uh, including the geocoding, semantic transformation, and special situation simulation. And uh, there are over about hundred special um, related knowledge has been visualized. And we also have uh, other non-special informations. Uh, like the dynamic graph and uh, and uh, pictures, videos, and uh, uh, the super links, and all these things are uh, 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 logically connected uh, to form this uh, form this uh, a knowledge graph. And uh, this knowledge graph is uh, made up about five levels of knowledge network, uh, three field nodes, uh, fixing target nodes. 44 connotation nodes, 68 knowledge points, and over 700 data packs. And uh, based on this uh, knowledge we extracted, we developed our service system. And uh, this system using some uh, knowledge graph visualization and next customization and technologies. And uh, based on these uh, tools, we developed a knowledge service hub. And here is the knowledge service customization tools. Uh, it's just like uh, uh, like uh, a dashboard. You can uh, yeah, define the uh, elements of this uh, visualized knowledge and uh, arrange them on this uh, canvas and uh, to mm, customize the visualization uh, mode. And using these tools, we built up this website about the uh, SDG and knowledge hub. It's about five parts. The uh, indicator parts, knowledge, and story, and search, and bounds part. And uh, to support this, our uh, functions like uh, 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 indicator uh, reviewing of the uh, results and uh, the uh, knowledge way of these uh, SDG situations, and also have some search box and story map button. And uh, when we finish that, uh, the 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 local government. Um, interruption, Doctor. Need to drop up in the next minute, please. Okay. Uh, so the first, the next part is about how we uh, this local SDG action plan is produced in these knowledge services. Uh, so the SDG implementation should integrate the 2030 agenda with regional long-term development plans, and uh, the assessment, implementation, and monitor. Uh, Paths of SDGs should set up, and I think it's uh, you know from top to bottom model. So, uh, we, from national and uh, to national and regional uh, uh, level, we should have some uh, sh should have set some examples. Uh, I think the two questions should answer is how to integrate the 2030 agenda with regional long-term development plans. 
how to build a path between SDGs monitoring and implementations. So here is the work we finished this year. So we uh, do this knowledge support decision making. First is to use the uh, report and the knowledge stories to uh, to analyze this, the gap of to analyze the gap between the local objects and the requirement. Uh, and requirements to the uh, target, and then we he, we promote this uh, detailed action plans for reach these uh, local objects and requirements. And uh, uh, the final uh, Deutsche County level plans on implementation of 2030 agenda has formed. There are 44 local development objects and, and 86 action measures, and. Uh, uh, for each goal, there are some SDG overviews, gap analysis, and the quantized uh, requirements, uh, action uh, action descriptions, and and all of these uh, uh, local objects are combined together to form these uh, action plans. Welcome to the uh, summary. I want to say that this case is selected as one of the good practice by UN. Um, uh, from uh, seven, uh, seven uh, more than seven hundred uh, uh, candidates, there are five hundred twelve. And this year, the uh, UN BSA uh, released uh, this digital publication about SDG good practice, uh, confirmation of successful story, and lesson learned in SDG implementations. And uh, there are sixteen uh, cases uh, in this uh, publication, and uh, we are in the Asia Pacific part. So I think this case study realized a comprehensive measurement to the progress towards SDG at the subnational level. And uh, it proves the multiple ways that the uh, geospatial and uh, statistical can integrate together to support this work. And also a mechanism of monitoring knowledge decision action has been set up and realized to support the local SDG implementations by combining the local development plans. And also this work price was uh, on the legal assessing and it will release next year. So that's all I want to share. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Great. Right. All these details about how to localize the SDG monitoring and implementation. Are there any questions or comments? I don't see any in the chat or any hands raised. Thank you again. Um, Thank you. We'll see if any more come up as we go along. Um, and now I would like to invite Mr. Liu from Citori Tech uh, to talk to us about mapping with images analysis based on urban visual context. So continuing along this line of urban development and sustainable development. Hello? Yes. Can you hear me? Can you oh, yeah. Let me do the presentation. Let me try this one. I can't do this. Hold on a second. Uh, I'm going to try this one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, can you see here? The, so yes. Can you see the slides? Yes, you see the slides. All right. Okay, just so we can just start. Yes, please. Uh, really, uh, just make sure that we can we can see the correct slides, right? Uh, the, the covering. Yes, we see the slides mapping the thing. That'll be. Okay. Okay. Cool. So my name is Neil, and I'm very glad to be here to do the presentation. And uh, we are a team from uh, Shanghai, uh, China. And uh, uh, technically, we are using um, image data for, uh, uh, for the urban study area or uh, uh, the, the, the analysis of urban physical environment. And uh, so uh, let's start. Um, as we can see, a lot of today's uh, the world is full of uh, technique tools and if we look at our city it serves us in many aspects in the meantime technology such as big data data visualization and deep learning become powerful in understanding almost every industry and uh, our mission is trying to uh, instill technology into the study area and to see what we can do um, 
mostly we are using the the uh, data visualization as a tool to display a lot of different kind of data and such as the trajectory of um, cycling uh, data and uh, or the LPS data to see the the paths of the city and uh, uh, during a 24 hours in, within a day and also like the uh, the OD data original destination data to see the uh, the working and the job bad, job working uh, job housing balance of, of the city area and uh, for this topic uh, for today's topic we are trying to uh, emphasize uh, the usage of geotech images which is uh, intuitive data set for our uh, study area and I think it's a very good way to understand the urban space and uh, technically we are using street view images or uh, pictures from um, the crowdsourcing or, or sometimes we can use a little bit um, a satellite image also uh, so it's, uh, uh, the first part we are trying to uh, introduce a little bit about computer vision in urban study. Um, as we can see, a lot of um, recognition of uh, image has been applied during today's world, and uh, the breakthrough of um, uh, computer vision um, accelerates, as I can as I show you here in the slide, the process of structuring uh, image data. We can do a lot of like um, the object detection and segmentation, and uh, uh, my team also uh, do a lot of application in uh, in some industrial area like using the supervision, uh, using the CCTV to do a lot of supervision uh, in main uh, factories or uh, uh, urban transportation system or some spe specific area. And uh, uh, also, some satellite images recognition is also applied for using as as many as experts has mentioned before to do a lot of detections uh, on the ground. And uh, uh, the the most uh, aspects we are focusing on is actually a little bit different from uh, previous uh, introduction. Uh, we, we we are more interested in the human vision, a uh, human perspective uh, to see uh, of the of the environment. Uh, for example, like the pedestrian recognition, vehicles, street signs, uh, street furniture, and public facilities, and also some segmentations to see the green space area uh, with the visual context. Um, we also use some um, other. Uh, some other uh, aspects has also been used for, uh, for example, like the sync recognition and uh, uh, the using the deep features to uh, do some specific uh, algorithm to see the difference between different places because the similarity of different places is also our uh, one of our um, major uh, concern. concern. And uh, apart from the street object detection and sync recognition, we also do a lot of uh, complexity, uh, complexity classifier, uh, for example, like the informal vendors uh, to recognize the informal vendors uh, along the streets, and also uh, road selection, uh, road section recognition, like how many different uh, uh, lanes are there uh, within a street or a road, and also some uh, more complicated. Uh, uh, index for uh, urban design, uh, like the street canyon or the, the height, the ratio between height and width of the road. Um, these are some rough uh, examples of uh, what we can do uh, with the help of uh, uh, computer vision to um, measure or calibrate um, our physical environment, especially for the streets and for uh, the open space. And uh, next, I will uh, make some introduction for uh, uh, how we use that uh, technical uh, technical tools or uh, uh, help uh, to directly um, uh, guide our um, urban uh, study or uh, the process of urban planning or the uh, the evaluation of physical environment. Uh, 
uh, for example, can use um, uh, street view images from uh, uh, the the on the website uh, to to recognize the distribution of different bicycles and cars and pedestrian cities. And this is an isometric map of Beijing, and uh, you can see a lot of uh, the distribution of the different distribution for uh, different categories. Uh, for example, the cars and the this is, these are the pedestrians. You can recognize the main um, uh, hotspot of a city and uh, the commercial um, high uh, the high density of the different commercial areas is illustrated uh, on the map. I also use um, uh, some web tools to see the different distribution of uh, informal manners uh, within Shanghai, and uh, this is a very important uh, part because you can. Uh, see the the different kernel for example if you use a kernel density map to see the area of the city map you can see a different map uh, different visual distribution of uh, 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 interesting facilities so that uh, for especially for the urban development purpose uh, specific area should be uh, preserved or some some specific area, historical area, should be defined. Especially the boundary of different uh, zones uh, needs to be uh, uh, very be, uh, precisely uh, defined during those data. Uh, next slide. And also some uh, low density or high density of building ratio uh, is also for the. Uh, for the, uh, to, to, to deliver a uh, comfortable uh, uh, pedestrian vision area is also uh, a part of our urban study for, uh, to see uh, for the uh, urban design purpose. For example, if you can see a lot of high ratio of uh, greenery area, it's also a great place for uh, living condition and also high uh, low building ratio is uh, for some other uh, transportation purpose. Uh, we also did a lot of uh, a map for uh, using the greenery ratio uh, to, to evaluate the quality of streets. For example, we have already uh, collected uh, around uh, all around uh, 600 cities uh, street view images and we calculate uh, the greenery ratio for each streets do the ranking stuff here like this to see uh, which which cities has the most green uh, green space uh, on the streets and which city is not uh, has a good uh, do, do not have a good performance in this uh, ranking and also the top uh, we also collect over twenty million street view images in two thousand nineteen and. Uh, uh, here are the top 10 cities and bottom 10 cities. Well, I think the, the maps, uh, the slides are more uh, very uh, illustrative already, and you can see different cities has different structures see, um, in this perspective of three cities. Okay, the green vision rate uh, ran over. 250 cities in China. Uh, and uh, for a more detailed structure, or a detailed scale for uh, uh, the green space area, we can see uh, the street view, green street, uh, the, the analysis of green streets in Shanghai, for example. As we can see, Shanghai has defined and constructed around 445 green streets using green vision. They provide another way to examine the effectiveness of the local government's uh, investment. Because as we can see, uh, Shanghai, uh, many, many, actually uh, in many cities in China, uh, if, uh, the, the local governments, especially the municipal governments, will uh, define uh, many green streets uh, in their city and uh, using the vision side to see the green space we can uh, uh, evaluate or assess 
whether they have already applied their um, efforts in making streets green uh, in a very effective way, or uh, we can find whether there are other hidden streets also has the green uh, greenery ratio, uh, but has not been found from the local government. It's actually uh, like um, entire scan map of a city to see whether uh, where are the Can you say that to, um, Could you wrap up yes. in the next two minutes, please? Okay. Okay, so uh, wrap up in two minutes? Yeah, the next okay. two minutes, please. Okay, fine. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, just just jump this part. Uh, we can also use the geotech the images to see the urban structure and the perceived space. Uh, for example, we can use the geotech images from the panorama or from, from, or from Google Earth to see the uh, perceived space and uh, the difference between the perceived space and the real space is uh, the gap uh, to see whether some uh, green space or uh, uh, urban, public open space has been fully used by the public or by the local people. Uh, and uh, let's see. And also these are some details about how we use the data to see, uh, to evaluate the, the usage of, of different spaces. And we also do some uh, uh, deep learning algorithm to see, uh, to let a uh, machine to evaluate space in with human uh, receiveness, uh, for example, we can evaluate the safety score for different streets and to find the best way for traveling or for tourism. And also find the problematic area within a city uh, which, which has those space which is, looks not very uh, safe, for example, in Beijing. The interest. And also, we did uh, some. Um, Evaluation last year we go back for to see the uh, the TO, the environment uh, the, the, the the environment within uh, within the you know okay. and also we did a state reflection and uh, public engagement and to do some uh, survey for them to see which space uh, is more uh, comfort comfortable for uh, uh, living or uh, for working. Okay, uh, and the, the last one is we, we did uh, recently uh, we are working with a uh, World Bank to uh, apply a uh, transportation facility, uh, the, the condition of transportation facilities evaluation uh, in uh, Mongolia, uh, land matter. Using the, our technology and tools. Okay. So these are mostly our um, work with the uh, geotech images and to see the data collaboration and data analysis. Thank you. Thank you very much. It looks like you have so much to share. <laughs> I'm sorry to rush you, but um, I think this oh, will be available too. And I see one question, so you can take one quick question and then we have to move on because we have a, a time for our activity demo at 11.20, but so we don't want to. <laughs> we have a presentation to get to before that. Um, we have one question. Um, can we detect? Can we take do you need baby history? Sorry, uh, a little bit trauma. So what is UAB? Uh, uh UAB based on data uh you mentioned it. Uh how to do it? Uh, basically we collect data first. You mean you mean uh uh using using deep learning actually. <laughs> the, the quick answer is Land area B. Uh, yes, actually. For example, we can use. Uh, uh, actually, we, we are working with some uh, local government to, to do the uh, things, sim just to do some similar things in this area. Uh, 
but uh, the data is kind of like uh, you have to first collect a lot of labeled data and labeling them and uh, do the uh, train process and uh, get the answer. And that is a very long way to do the interrecognition pro uh, process. And we also has um, API uh, soft, uh, open, to, open, open platform uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, build some um, tools based on our API is okay. And uh, I think there's no pre answer to this question, uh, but we can do the answer here. Thank you. Uh, I think for the sake of time, if there are other questions, please put them in the chat. Um, for the sake of time, I'd like to move on to the next presenter um, so that we can get up to time now. But <laughs> thank you for your patience with I moving back and forth with the next um, order of welcome. And I would like to welcome uh, Dr. Rao from uh, Israel to talk about geospatial applications for sustainable development with a focus on housing. So the uh, is yours, and please do share your presentation. Yes, yes, please, yeah. Uh, can I hear the Dr. Brasov? Yes, I hear you well. Uh, thank you. And, uh, well, I hope my presentation is also visible. It's coming now. Is my presentation? Ah, okay. Yes, I see it now. Okay. Thank you. Uh, a very good morning to all, and uh, I am thankful to the organizers of this uh, very important workshop on uh, integration of geospatial information for sustainable development in Southeast Asia. And uh, what I would be presenting in uh, this brief session would be an overview of uh, some of uh, analysis activities related to urban studies using geospatial techniques and uh, of course that would be in June with uh, the uh, sustainable development goal number 11. Well, when you look at uh, the overall scenario, how the uh, cities are growing, uh, it is expected that uh, by 2050, the urban population is uh, likely to be doubled. That is about 70 uh, people for every 100 uh, uh, people of the uh, country. So 70. The development goal 11 tells us is to make cities inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. So in that context, we had a, a very important meeting in uh, October 2016 in Ecuador, where Habitat 3 has set the agenda for sustainable development. When you look at uh, the right side uh, bottom plot, uh, you can see that the cities like uh, Delhi, Shanghai, Beijing, and of course uh, uh, Bombay, uh, another big city in India, uh, these are the ones that are uh, growing very fast. And when you come to more specifically the Indian scenario, development is mostly in uh, metropolis, uh, metropolis. And uh, about 53 metros are having almost 42% of uh, urban population. And uh, the level of urbanization is uh, about 31%. And Mumbai or Bombay is uh, one of those cities that is uh, uh, growing fast with uh, more and more uh, uh, people living in the uh, city. Now, if you look at uh, the right side plot, right from 1901 to 2011, if you see the number of towns and cities in India were 1917. By the time it was 2011, when we received the last census, it was 7,933 towns or cities. The urban population has increased uh, very exponentially, right from 25.8 million to 377 uh, million. So the rate of growth of urban population is also uh, quite fast, as you see it on the right column. And the bottom right one shows uh, the, clearly the urban population is increasing while the rural population is uh, uh, stabilizing or even tending to show a, a kind of uh, reduced rate of uh, uh, increase. 
when uh, the habitat team meeting was held in uh, 2016, prior to that one, India has taken certain uh, urban initiatives, uh, which are all listed on the left side of the uh, slide, right from 1992 onwards. And uh, they have met with uh, quite a good amount of uh, success, uh, whether you call it uh, the Urban Reform Incentive Fund or uh, the Jawaharlal Nehru National Urban Renewal Mission or uh, National Urban Housing and Habitat Policy and so on. Now, coming to the current uh, uh, period, right from uh, 2014 uh, onwards until uh, uh, 2030, when uh, we need to fulfill the uh, SDG 11 objectives, you can see that uh, some very important initiatives have been uh, put in place. Uh, like 